Hey guys, Chris from Prepared Mind 101 out here in the Prepared Mind 101 garage. Uh, I was just cleaning up the garage and uh, had an idea. It might be a dumb idea, but you know, let's see how this turns out. Uh, this is just something that I do because I have so much stuff. Uh, all the little odds and ends I think might come in handy in a kit someday. I've got this dedicated like junk drawer thing and I haven't checked it in a long time to see what all is in there so I figured I'd take a look in there and uh, see how many survival items we can find. Uh, this is just how I keep track of stuff. I mean I could probably make a bunch of stuff you know small kits with what's in here so let's uh, see what we got. So here it is the prepared mind 101 junk drawer so <laughs> I have no idea what's in here but let's find out maybe I got some cool survival kit stuff that's been overlooked so here we go got some toasty toes this is very handy in the winter uh, especially if you're caught out surviving whatnot and you don't have the right boots or the right socks these things will save your ass because it's one of the first things that's going to drive you nuts is really cold feet okay that ain't going to help you paper clips I just put all these together I had them for something and I figured well MacGyver could do a lot of crazy stuff with these things so that's some uh, simple wire I could make some wire snares with this or uh, bind something up ooh a Comtex stinger this is for punching people in the head and making it hurt really really bad so it's an interesting little oh, my knees interesting little uh, self-defense item if you ever been hit by one <laughs> you'll know how bad they suck uh, these are my o-rings extra o-rings for my k-bar handle a little camouflage Saxon knife. Here's a K bar dozier folder, which I basically was just using this as a striker. Kind of a striker you could cut stuff with. This is a, this would be an EDC item, or urban EDC item. It's called a McFeely's Pocket Wrench 2. It's a nice little pry bar, and it's, this thing's actually really handy at loosening nuts and stuff. You know, save your lips and start a fire. What else we got here? Snake bite kit. Uh, sport sunscreen. That, that's more of a summertime survival thing. Not really survival, but I, it hasn't been that sunny and bad, so... You know, I always get these things from the dentist, you know, floss is cordage. You know, there's, what, three yards of cordage right there. And there's a, there's a ferro rod. Uh, that must have been in a kit at some time. Basically cut a piece of ruler, wrap some duct tape around it, and then I wrap some wire around that. A little keychain lights, of course, you know, lighters duh what else we got here match case what's in it ah trick birthday candles so that was obviously for a fire kit at some point uh what the hell are these things called it's got a specific name like four-way tool or something but it's basically a file that you could do a lot of woodworking survival type stuff with it just wasn't for me really yeah, more little screwdriver things I like these expandable USB cables for my smartphone plug it into my external batteries yeah, got me something good in here okay this was a earplug case that I put some coin cell batteries in for like my little energizer headlights it's stuffed in all my different things this was in a survival kit at one point it's just a little case that I sealed up with tape with some razor blades of course now I got those other razor blades that oh you haven't seen that yet that's coming up <laughs> uh, what is this oh, this is a little extra 
battery booster thing for a cell phone, which is also a light, but it's not a whole lot. Uh, some Becker BK-14 handles that I started sculpting and never finished. It's the Wilson wrap for my Becker handles. Anything else interesting in here, survival wise? P38 can opener. Tack clock, you know, okay. So there's that. Let's move over here to drawer two. <sighs> okay, apparently this is my fire drawer. <laughs> Although I do have some tough cloth in here. Here's the rest of that stupid uh, Sterno fire starter gel that I reviewed. It basically discovered it's colored hand sanitizer. Petroleum jelly for fire starting. Uh, that's some Pathfinder fixin' wax. Bunch of millions of uses. This is one of those uh, replacement filters for the Berkey sport bottle so this will filter just about everything it's pretty much the same as the black Berkey elements for you know my homemade Berkey water filter system so you just add some some clear tubing to this and you got a drink straw and you don't have to use the sport bottle itself and John McCann's site you know a little Fresnel lens Missing the lid, but all I need is a two-liter lid. These, if you didn't know what these, you've seen these test tube, baby test tube bottle or whatever they're called. Uh, they're, these are basically two-liter bottles before they go into the machine, get heated and blown up. So they're kind of bulky, but they're also pretty bomb-proof. I was experimenting with this. This is basically candle wick. So I got this at uh, the hobby store. I was kind of playing around with different you could take some of this wick and then some of this Murray's beeswax did I put some in here no not in this one uh, this is something I saw in a Dave Canterbury video once I think I got this at uh, Family Dollar Dollar General I think it was Dollar General uh, but you can do a lot of stuff with this and really good for starting fires it burns a long time uh, this is one of those SOL. These things suck. I don't like them at all. Mm. Tea light. Bunch of lighters from the dollar store. Of course, Carmax, you can burn it and protect your lips and all that. Uh, some wire. I've got bundles of wire in here. I've been trying to find these. I can't find them anymore. This was uh, these little cloth bags was from my cousin's wedding. They used to have like chocolate covered espresso beans in it, but man, I really liked them. They're like little cotton burlap sacks for sacks for you know stuffing things in. So haven't been able to find a source for those yet. You might think that these are pellets, but actually what they are, it's this stuff that I had taken and filled it up. So I think these are the ones that I put the uh, the wicks in, so they could be used as a candle also. But I don't, I'm not using a tripod, so I can't open it up. Or some more petroleum jelly for starting fires. Jute twine for starting fires. One of those Nalgene squeeze bottles uh, with some of this sterno crap in it. It's a big spool of uh, floss, so a ton of cordage right there. More trick birthday candles. So that's that. Let me pause this and put some of this back. All right, what's in survival junk drawer number three? This looks like it's mostly cordage. These are replacement uh, ties for slingshot bands, which that's going to Ryan, my new graphics guy. Some cotton rounds from the dollar store. These are what I use. If you saw the, the last What Survival Items thing uh, video I did with the gel wax, this is what I dip, dip in the gel wax. So, 
make fire starters with that. Uh, some utility cord. Uh, nylon belt. God, I gotta fix this. So, here's some bank line that I've bundled up to put in a kit. You know, pair, a lot of paracord bundles, it looks like. There's some thicker bank line. This is probably like 300. No, this one's about 250. Multiple things of, you know, jute twine and paracord and seam tape, final seam tape. That's for repairing my dry bags. Yeah, this isn't very much of a survival item, but this also doesn't work worth a shit. Super lube. Where did I find this stuff at? I think I found it at Harbor Freight once. This is like some really awesome lubricant for just about everything. Ooh, some 18-inch heavy-duty wire leaders. Basically, what I was experimenting with these is using these as... Uh, survival snares so this would actually be the part that snares the animal 24 inches best though what I use that for uh, 4 7 flashlight holster anything else besides cordage in here there's some little zip ties Let's see, marking tape. Uh, this is this is a legitimate survival item for if you're like hiking out somewhere, big woods like national park or somewhere, and you get lost. You can mark your trail, tear off a little bit of this, and tie it to a tree with you know an arrow on the ground, so people can find you. More jute twine. Got this at Ollie's, so whole bunch of it. I mean, great. I mean, it's. It's cordage and it's uh, tinder bundle material, so jute twine is very multi-purpose. It's another flashlight case. So, as you're seeing here, whenever I just have these odds and ends, they all go in the survival junk drawer. and I can get quite a bit of little, you know, kit stuff out of here. What's in this one? I have no idea. Okay. We, this is seat belt material. Basically the kids outgrew the, the, the kitty car seats and now we're just using the car seats with, you know, now then you can use it with the regular car seat belt. So I salvaged that. I figured I could use it for something because that's real strong stuff. Uh, a mesh ditty bag. Some of these travel toothbrushes. These are good. I use these for the hygiene kits. Plastic drop cloth. Uh, this is this looks like Lowe's brand. So this is 0.7 mil, 9 foot by 12 foot. So this is portable cover or ground cloth if it's if it's wet. 100% uh, max deep and some Dr. Bronner's soap. A little trowel. Hmm, I don't think these work very well, but I got some uh, elastic bands. Uh, I think I got this at like Michael's or Joanne's Fabric or something. Basically, if I got some sort of sheath. Uh -oh. Sorry about that. What else is in here? Uh, 55 gallon barrel liners. And this is, these are these uh, like doggy crap bags, the little dispenser. Uh, I was messing around with it one time, kind of like a, a way to collect wild edibles, which I don't know crap about wild edibles, so unless I'm with Will, you know, <laughs> I guess you could just put dog crap in them, I guess. So there's that one, and then we get to survival junk drawer number four. Let's see what we got in this one. Okay, one of these, uh, Plano locking boxes, which looks like it's got some vaporizer stuff in it. That is a big roll of the 95 pound test uh, bank line. I got this one from the Pathfinder. No, no, I didn't get from the Pathfinder store. I got it from the at the school itself last time I was there. 
So you can see there's about 1,600 feet of <laughs> survival line right there. Here is got to put that in the mail. It's that half cock slingshot. Portable fire tinder. It, it also doubles as uh, helping to stop menstrual bleeding. Some more foot warmers. These are preferable for winter, the whole foot ones. So, what else we got in here? Uh, Under Armour Ninja Hood. <laughs> so, if you want to be a ninja, it's not really Ninja Hood, but it's you know, for cold weather. Uh, more 55 gallon barrel liners for shelter. This right here. This is something I came up with, and I I was informed that you know this is an old trick, but you know there's no such thing as you know new ideas anymore. But it works great. Basically, it's a tube, and then I took some electrical tape and kind of made a little bite valve, and then I've got a cop copper tube in the end of it, and I use this for stoking up a fire. So if if uh, you're trying to get something going good, and you know. You want to put it right down to where the coals are and, and get that thing flaring hot just to get going again. This thing works great. Uh, some extra tube. There's an old camelback bottle. Should probably pitch that. And a whole bunch of these bamboo skewers. What was I going to do with these? Oh, I think I was making a large blowgun darts with these for killing birds but I mean you can also use these to cook food with or whatever over the campfire if you're just doing like frog's legs or something like that so there you go and there's some bleach left over from the last blade etching job so you can see you know, what I've done here that might have been a little bit of you know underwhelming I don't know but the idea is having one of these, you know, little carts, you know, that they generally use for, you know, baby items. And just whenever you've got some junk that might be useful for survival, you know, you throw it in here. And then every once in a while when you want to whip a kit together or fill an Altoids tin or whatever, you know you've got useful stuff in here. So that's my idea. I had really no idea what was in here. Uh, so I figured... Eh, maybe I'll find some cool stuff and maybe someone will think that's a good idea or whatnot. But that's just what I'm saying. I've got so much crap, you know, for survival gear and tools and just trying things out and trying to come up with my own stuff. I gotta put my junk and supplies somewhere. So there you go. That's it. Uh, that was just like the most amazing video you've ever seen, right? I'm Chris from Prepare Mind 101. I'm going to keep it simple. Thanks for watching. Oh, one more thing while we're at it, because this is going to be applicable to pretty much everybody. Everybody's got one of these, right, in the kitchen. This is the kitchen junk drawer. This is the drawer that no matter how many times I clean it out, the wife just fills it up full of crap. So what kind of survival items can we find in this one? Okay, I got I to put the... Uh, Okay, Pause. survival items. Well, right off the bat, there's my sticky hockey tape for my Becker handles that my wife said she didn't know where it was. Uh-huh. Threw it in the damn drawer. Here's a little uh, multi-mini screwdriver kit thing I found. It used to be in, a, in one of my urban kits. A whole lot of pens and tape. <laughs> Look at this crap. It's unbelievable. Oh, here's some, some of those little compressed camping survival towels or whatever. Lighters. This was in an urban mini kit that I had put together once. This little mini vice grips that I found. They're like a buck at Lowe's. So, not too much. Uh, 
here's a here's a lighter that was obviously in a survival kit because I've got it taped off so the button can't be depressed. See what I'm talking about? I got freaking every drawer, every room in my house has got survival junk. Let me go see if I can find some more. Okay, this is the nightstand on my side of the bed, and pay no attention to that because, like I said. I don't have any evil guns. I dropped mine over the side of a boat, so buzz off, nosy government. Um, <laughs> this is the junk drawer where my wife throws all my crap that she doesn't know where it goes. So I have to clean this out like every three weeks or so. Jeez. Wow. Okay. I was wondering where that went. I was looking for that. I was wondering where this went. That needs to be refolded. This is that uh, Walmart tarp. It's only like 5x7, but I took spray adhesive and put a Mylar blanket inside of it. So it's like a heavy-duty rescue survival tarp thing. I think there's a video on it. Uh, there's the G-Shock I was wearing before I upgraded to the Shiznit watch. Walk a walk a box. I don't even know why the hell I still have that. Oh, I was wondering where this was. That's supposed to be in my trunk. When all hell breaks loose by Cody Lundeen. Uh, what is this? Ah, uh, blessed holy oil. Uh, Left over from the ghost hunting days. <laughs> Be amazed at what some of that stuff will do. Uh, what is this? Uh, pellets for the air rifle. Uh, I was wondering where that was. This is a Stanley Mini crowbar, which I cut in half and wrapped it up. So this was like a little mini pry bar. This used to be in my EDC bag, and then I think I sharpened sharpened the edges enough to where it could be used with a fire steel. What else is in here? Bible. Even though I'm not Christian, it's still an interesting little esoteric book. Flashlights, this work. Yep. Give that one to the kids. So when you can't find your stuffed animal in the middle of the night. You don't need to come bug dad. You can find it yourself. Okay, I think we're going to have to clean this out tonight. This is pretty ridiculous. FRS walkie-talkie. More pellets. More pellets. More pellets. If you're wondering why I have so many pellets back here, it's because of this. Right there, that's where my little kill zone is for this damn groundhogs. I keep getting under there, running through my yard. No matter what I do, they always come back. One gets away and goes and breeds a whole nother batch of pain in the asses. So is there anything else in here? What's in this? What is this? like anti-fog lens swabs. Ooh, that's exciting. Okay, this video is just getting better and better. There's the box to the SRT7 with, with its bullcrap claim of 960 lumens when everything else that they put out says it's like 850 or something like that. That needs to get pitched. Survival items. Yeah, that looks about it for the survival items. So, so much for that junk drawer. Where else do I stu stuff junk around here? Figure this out. This is another junk closet. Believe it or not, our house is actually really nice. It's just we have these little dark corners where we stuff stuff, or rather my wife does. So, she's got a little bit of that kid mentality, you know. Get everything nice and clean and shove it under the bed. Well, I was wondering where all this stuff went to. 
sleeping bag, sleeping bag, you know, MMSS sleep system. Here's uh, some of my grab and go food stuff. So, zombie apocalypse hits, you know, Walking Dead are coming. There's a three day pack of MRE stuff and some of this stuff. And who knows what all's in there? And I got this. 30 liter seal line bag full of food, you know, storable food, dehydrated food, mountain house food. And then I've got, so I don't have pallets of this stuff like, you know, doomsday preppers do. I've, I've got enough for, you know, maybe a week's worth of emergency before I go to plan B. Got one of these wise foods. I think I got that from, uh, well, I don't want to mess up the website, so I'll just leave it out. And then I got a Tupperware bin back there with a whole bunch of food that I did with the dehydrator. Alrighty. So, that's about it. Oh, gonna have to go take the kids on a walk. So, oh, there's a whole crap load of rice. <laughs> you never know what you can find in my closet. That's it, guys. Have a good one. Just occurred to me there's one other place that uh, could be considered junk drawer compatible. My little Amish built shed. So let's see what's see what we got going on in here. Okay, got an ammo box. Anything in it? No, it is empty. Sleeping bags, boots. Lantern. I have not been out here in a while. Water jug. Uh, some kid crying next door. There's some uh, wood pellets for a pellet stove. I tried for my BioLite. Didn't work as good as they said it would. Tarps. There's some sort of canopy I got at a garage sale for five bucks. These things are usually like 90 bucks. There's more sleeping bags. What is in here? This is one giant junk drawer. Whoa, ramen noodles. That's like last ditch freaking doomsday freaking food. Okay, there's the tent that I broke the tent poles to. Gotta find some new tent poles. What we got in here? Some cheap camp sweet stuff. That's some uh, hot chalk that I got somewhere. Super sale. This bug out location, a little double wash bin. It's never been opened. This is what kind of crazy overflow I've got. Anything else in here? Ah, you remember the other day when I was. Uh, Doing the what the the most recent what survival items can I find at? And I was in the electronics aisle and I was looking for something. This is what I was looking for. These are get it open here. Little portable infrared motion sensor alarms. I don't know if this has got any battery action to it. Nope, battery's dead. But the idea was. You know, you could use these for, you know, perimeter security on the move. Like if you're holed up in a warehouse somewhere and you want to go to sleep, put one of these in the main hallway leading to where you're at. And then you can be woken up if someone tries to sneak up on you and do really bad things. Anything else in here? Uh, let's see. Got some vegetable oil. I think this honey... <sighs> It's probably seen better days. Yeah, honey can be salvaged, just gotta warm it up, but yeah, that's probably gonna go. Junk drawer, never know. You know, this is a, I was experimenting with this. This was a dollar store windshield sun reflector. I was thinking of using it, you know, like on top, putting it on top of a camping mat to reflect my body heat back up to me or as a reflector of fire or something like that. But, oh, I was wondering where this went. It's supposed to be in the other garage. These are highly valuable 
survival situation, especially if you have kids or ladies with you that are not outdoor inclined. This is the luggable blue lid. Turns every five gallon bucket into a toilet seat. So, yes, you need it. Here we cleaned out the, I mean, look at all this. Paracord I bought from CampingSurvival.com and I got it and like the end came off and the whole thing just turned into a giant freaking knot. $50 worth of paracord. Never, never order there again. That's a whole nother story. These are just some of our old cookware. She was going to throw it out. I'm like, why throw it out when we can throw it in a junk pile somewhere? You know, if we had to, I could use this for, you know, camping. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty bad about that. But you know what? If, you know, everything broke down tomorrow, all this little extra stuff, yeah, there's, a, there's a sleeping mat up there. All this little extra stuff would come in handy. That is, that is basic uh, hoarder's talk. <laughs> Can't throw it away because someday I might need it. Nah, it's just it's overflow. This actually doesn't look that bad. Uh, here's a good way to, to uh, get food. Have a heart traps. Those are the easiest ways to get something to eat in a, in a grid down scenario. I mean, it just works every freaking time. All you gotta do is throw some cat food in it and dinner just runs into the cage. So, I think that pretty much does it. Go over here to my usual spot. This will work. So I hope you enjoyed this fascinating tour into the main junk zones of the Prepared Mind 101 uh, compound. Boy, I really, I probably shouldn't film myself after a, for a fast run around the block with the kids in the middle of a video. But the point of this was, you know, as long as you're not turning into a hoarder and cluttering up your main living spaces, you know, the stuff that might come in handy for survival, you know, put them, at least get one of those little plastic drawer sets like I showed you at the beginning of the video. The rest of the stuff, that's just me having too much stuff, my wife getting tired of looking at it, so she stuffs it somewhere. So, <laughs> I'm sure every, everybody can, you know, relate to that. Uh, to some degree or another most of my kit stuff though is you know in bags all packed up you know hanging in the garage or in my trunk or whatever but that give you any ideas you know not just you know to organize your junk but think about the stuff that you have laying around your house right now uh, take a look at it you know see if you can turn some junk into some valuable you know survival items so I'm Chris from Prepared Mind 101 and this is my fancy new Cabela's hat, which details Columbus, Ohio, where we're filming from. So, isn't that cool? You don't care, do you? I didn't think you would. I don't really care either. I'm just babbling now. Time to go inside and edit some videos. Have a good day, guys. Oh, you want some bonus footage, do you? Okay. Well, somebody asked me about this the other day. So, I might as well show you. I never showed it in my version of what survival items do I carry in my trunk. This is my wife's uh, Hyundai Santa Fe. There's one of my heavy duty tarps. People wanted to know what kind of survival stuff that I had stashed in here that she doesn't even know about. That is for Trangia alcohol stoves. So let's see. Okay, obviously it is not winter anymore, but I do have gloves. I've got washcloths, moist wipes, some uh, children's Tylenol. This is Dr. Bronner's soap. This is Dr. Bronner's soap. This is great for your survival packs. This is a uh, crystal deodorant. One of these suckers right here will last you for months and months and months. You just get it wet, throw it under your underarms. Uh, it's it's basically got some silver something or other in there. It just basically kills the germs. 
So let me back up here. I gotta set this camera down. Get into the second compartment. Okay. So I, I cleared this out a little bit. Kids are walking around the box. So what do we got in here? Military grade duct tape. I got bank line. A knife. This is, I actually saw these at Walmart. My, one of my best friends gave me this one time. Let me pull it out. Ow. Doing that with your teeth sucks. It's like 440 steel or whatever. It is full tang. I've got it pretty sharp. It's got lights in it. <laughs> Gimmicky, but you know, hey, be sharp in this even full tang. It'll do in a pinch. Here's a buck knife I got at the Bushcraft Trading Post. It was a giveaway. It's one of the ones that I... Hey, don't do that. Filming with your one hand is not safe. So, I mentioned this in a video that I'm processing now. Uh, EMT rescue blankets. They're cheaper and they're pack smaller. Some 50 gallon barrel liners. Got a container here. This is all overflow basically, so I make kits and stuff them in everybody's cars. Here is some, those are some of those gel wax fire starters, you know, from the What Survival Items video uh, when I was at Michael's the other day. That's how it comes out. And with some of those Coleman fuel tabs, there's some more Coleman fuel tabs with some wet fire and a uh, fire steel. There's some of the first batch of fire starters that I made. It's a little bit, a little bit thicker. Got some lighters, some trick birthday candles. Oh god, I got more in here. Jesus Christ. Um, these things burn like a son of a bitch. Uh, called zip. It's like compressed kerosene blocks. These are the Weber. Uh, wet fire like blocks that you get at Home Depot. Some tinder quicks and some lighters. So basically, <laughs> God, I'm gonna get all this pack back in here. Basically, uh, we're gonna be able to start a fire with no problem. Because I have kids, five dollars at Big Lots. This makes tw 24 quarts of low calorie Gatorade G2. So the powdered stuff uh, doesn't have the high fructose co eh, corn syrup. This is the large dry bag from the three pack at Walmart. Uh, there is a full sized wool blanket tightly rolled up into this. So we've got the SAS survival handbook, some paracord, some jute twine, another tarp, uh, I don't even have the stove in here, but you know, there's a thing for one of those. That's a mountain house. Ugh. Mainstay bars. Ugh. More mainstay bars. There's some Daytrex bars. Those are a little better. This is the. Uh, this is one of those Berkey Sport filters. If I remember, I showed you earlier the replacement filters. So this is what, if you get the bottle, you just take your dirty river water, put it in here, and and you can drink it. Always have plenty of baby wipes for cleanups, aluminum foil for making a base for a fire, uh, a siphon for salvaging gas. There's another uh, Nalgene bottle. Uh, I bet the stove's in here. MSR Seagull 1.1 liter. Yep. So I got some chicken broth. And I've got one of these little camping. This is kind of a uh, cheap Amazon Chinese made MSR type uh, pocket rocket type stove. But don't let it fool you. These things are really freaking nice. And they're only like six bucks. 
So they go on, you know, these MSR fuel cans like that. So I've used this in the winter when I get up, you know, in the morning in the tent. It's freezing ass cold. I'll crank this thing on high, heat the tent up before I get out, and put my clothes back on. This is a Mac actual Max Edition bag. This is kind of like my family emergency hygiene kit. So I've got washcloths, some toilet paper, some more wipes. Uh, someone gave me this. I think my brother-in-law did. High security bath soap. This is like from uh, the prison system. So this is actually prison soap. Do not drop this. You will regret it. One, I think I got this from uh, Emergency Essentials. It's a toothbrush with toothpaste in it. There's some more of these folding toothbrushes for the family. And I got toothpaste. That's just really hard to do without a tripod. Here's a smaller one of those Crystal Dio's that I usually put in my uh, packs for when I go camping. Some soap, some Dr. Bronner's soap, some shampoo. So everything to keep the family nice and fresh in an emergency is in this bag. And it is very tightly packed. Uh, I've got a U.S. Road Atlas in there. There's one of those uh, bag dispensers. Is that anything? Nope. Nope. I got, uh, there should be more water in here. I need to address that. I've only got one, two, three, four, five bottles of water, so that's not good. There's another Nalgene bottle with another one of those uh, filters that I put the drinking straw on. So basically, this is a five C's plus survival system. You know, I've got a cutting. I've got two cutting tools. I've got plenty of cordage. You know, I've got you know three boilable containers. I've got water. I've got water filters. You know, I've got cover. You know, shelter cover. There was another one up there. I've got cover there. I've got cover there. Um, got a combustion device. Whole bunch of fuel. Got a little bit of emergency food. You know, high. I mean, it tastes like shit, but it's full of vitamins and stuff. So it'll get you, keep you going. So this is all stuff that I've got hidden in my wife's car so if she ever gets in an emergency I can basically walk her through it so there you have it that's the bonus to the junk drawer survival video so I'm Chris from prepared mind 101 thanks for watching